Perhaps it is a little clearer now that the moderate phase of Islam, based on the verses of the Meccan period simply did not exist as a bona fide religion and was a complete failure, even in the eyes of its founder. It was only after his relocation when he fled to Medina did Muhammad's plans start to resemble a religion with rigid and strict religious laws which evolved to become the basis for present-day Sharia law. At this defining stage, Islam divorced roots and its claim as the successor of Judaism and Christianity. Muhammad now accused the followers of the two Abrahamic religions, or Judeo-Christian followers, of corrupting their scriptures, hence deserving of persecution and death. He then began to borrow and incorporate in his Quran the religious rituals of the pagan Arabs of Mecca, especially the practices of the Hajj. He also changed the Qibla, direction for Muslim prayers, from Jerusalem to the Kaaba of Mecca, also called the Black House of Allah. By the way, the black flag of ISIS and Al-Qaeda was the original banner of Muhammad. In the beginning, Muhammad tried to please the Jews and that is why he prayed towards their holy city, Jerusalem. When the Jews refused to accept him as the prophet of Yahweh, Jehovah, he returned to his polytheist people and adopted their holy city, Mecca, and turned their black Kaaba into the house of his Allah and accepted all their pagan rituals of the Hajj. He also borrowed the five daily prayer system from the Mandaeans, in Quran called the Sabians, their fasting observance during Ramadan, and their festivals of Fitr, festival of Ramadan, and Nir, festival of slaughter. The Sabians are mentioned three times in the Quran as the people of the book along with the Jews and Christians. Muhammad even borrowed the fancy concepts of the Huri virgins and beautiful boys of paradise from the Persian religion of Zoroastrianism. Neither the Jews nor Christians ever went to Mecca to perform the pagan rituals of the Hajj. They did not perform the five compulsory prayers nor the month-long fasting, nor believed in the Zoroastrian virgins of paradise. Neither today nor in the past have the Jews and Christians prayed the way Muslims pray to their Allah. These precepts and rituals are entirely pagan and have absolutely nothing to do with the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. When Muhammad failed to convince the Jews and Christians, he simply declared them infidels. Like the blind groping in the dark, Muhammad used whatever fell into his hands to add into his new potpourri religion. He ended up with a cocktail of religions, Arab polytheism, Mandaeanism, Hanafiya, and Zoroastrianism. From those ancient Middle East pagan religions, he borrowed their religious rituals and practices which formed some of the five pillars of Islam, prayer, fasting, pilgrimage, hajj. He borrowed the rigid doctrine of the oneness of God from the Hanafiya sect of Mecca. From Judaism he incorporated the names and stories of the prophets after emptying them from any doctrinal teachings that based on the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath, the Passover, the Pentecost, the priestly office, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the animal sacrifices on the altar for atoning for one's sins, the seventy years of captivity, etc. He also vehemently rejected and viciously attacked the main Christian foundational doctrines such as the crucifixion, death and the resurrection of Christ. He considered the doctrines of the Holy Trinity and the divinity of Jesus Christ as unpardonable blasphemies against God. The negative attitudes of Muhammad towards Christianity and Judaism show that he was totally, completely, and fully inspired by the enemy of the God of these two heavenly revealed religions, the devil. Satan used him to the fullness and through him he attacked the heavenly revealed religions of Judaism and Christianity and tried to destroy them. No wonder his followers consider the Jews their bitterest enemies and Christians their great rivals and infidels who deserve to be killed. The religion that Muhammad came up with made even the demons to rejoice and gladly join it, Surah al Jinn 72 or Surah the Demons 72. Some Muslim scholars attempted to hide the fact that the jinns are demons or devils therefore stated that the jinns are neither angels nor devils, biblical fallen angels or evil spirits, but altogether different creatures of God. Such false assertion contradicts even the Quran which calls Satan one of the jinns. And, remember, when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated except Ibli, Satan. He was one of the jinns he disobeyed the command of his Lord. Will you then take him, Ibli, 
and his offspring as protectors and helpers rather than me while they are enemies to you? What an evil is the exchange for the Zalimun, evildoers, Surah 18, 50. The only things that Muhammad borrowed from Judaism and Christianity are the names of their prophets without showing what those prophets had taught. He deceitfully used the doctrine of the creation of Adam and Eve and the creation of the entire universe as a foundation to build on it his work-based concept of salvation. In the Quran, Adam and Eve are not created in the image and likeness of God. They are just like other animals created out of clay. Muhammad did not go beyond Genesis chapter 2. He omitted the basic Christian doctrines of the original sin, the fall of man, and the promise that the seed of the woman, Christ, will crush the head of the serpent, Satan, at the cross, Genesis 3, 15. Muhammad hated the cross and therefore in one of his hadiths said when Jesus Christ will return he will destroy all the crosses and kill all the Christians. Muhammad obviously avoided incorporating any doctrines from both the Abrahamic religions. He refused to borrow the Jewish doctrine of atonement and the Christian doctrine of salvation. Of course, these two doctrines complement each other in a sense that the latter is fulfillment to the former. In the Old Testament, Jews atone through the shedding of animal blood, once a year through the high priest during Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world through the vehicle of his death on the cross and shedding of his blood and he is our High Priest. Muhammad rejected the cross of Christ, the doctrine of salvation, redemption of mankind through his blood. He also flatly denied the divinity of Christ, death and resurrection of Christ, and the Holy Trinity. It is not enough to say that Muhammad is no way a prophet of God, but one must conclude that he is also anti-Christ. Many people believe the cunning and lying Muslims who falsely claim that Islam is part of Judeo-Christian family or a third Abrahamic religion. Throughout its history and until today, Islam made Muslims sworn enemies to the Jews and Christians. Historians stated that Muslims had killed 60 million Christians during their early invasions of the Christian lands and 80 million Hindus in the Indian subcontinent. When he fled from Mecca and came to Medina, Muhammad became the leader of two dominant Medinian tribes, the Aus and the Hazraj. All Medinians, with the exception of Jews, converted to Islam, following their leaders. During this new period, Muhammad turned 180 degrees and began to dictate a totally new message. It was in this period that all the evils of Islam came into existence, jihad spreading Islam by the sword and killing infidels who refused to accept Muhammad as the prophet and messenger of God, killing the apostates who deserted Islam, and all the misogynistic teachings against women were revealed by the prophet. During this ten-year period, every thinkable evil against infidels was sanctioned. They were authorized, legalized, encouraged, and divinized by the Quran and the thousands of hadiths uttered by Muhammad, roughly there are sixty thousand hadiths. Some Muslim scholars put the number way beyond that. Islam became the only acceptable religion on the entire earth and anyone daring to refuse the hospitality of the Muslim faith suffers to be killed, with his property, cattle, women and children to be distributed as war booty among the Muslim Mujahideen. Anyone accepts this religion or inherits it by birth through his father or mother can only forsake it on pain of death. Accordingly. Muhammad became a ruthless dictator who tortured and killed anyone refused his new message or dared to criticize or leave his new hodgepodge satanic religion. In Mecca with his few followers, the verses of the Quran praised the Jews and Christians and accepted their holy scriptures as divine revelations. In Medina, he found three powerful Jewish tribes and dealt with them treacherously. In the beginning, he continued to praise their religion and prophets and formed alliances with them. As he grew in strength, with more followers and weaponry, acquired through his habitual raids and invasions of other Arab tribes, he accused the Jews of corrupting their holy scriptures and began to kill them. According to the Egyptian Muslim scholar, Sayyid al-Kimni, when Muhammad decided to immigrate to Medina, necessity and wisdom required that some verses of the Quran should go before the Muslims to praise the children of Israel and their prophets, the admission that Allah has preferred them to other nations that in their Torah there is guidance and light, 
and they should follow what it is written in their Torah, Al-Islamiyat, Al-Kimni 2001, page 58. Nevertheless, this friendly atmosphere toward the Jews had changed for no other reason except that their alliance was no longer needed after the victory of the Battle of the Great Badr in which Muslims possessed weapons and great wealth and strength, Al-Kimni page 589. Initially, by praising the Jewish scripture and prophets, Muhammad expected the Jews to make room for his mishmash religion or accept him as one of their prophets, but none of that had happened. As the Meccans before them, the Jews of Medina and Kabar flatly rejected him as a false prophet and not a single one of them had converted to his hocus-bogus religion. It is somewhat surprising that it was only after the Battle of the Great Badr that Muhammad suddenly made the determination that the Jews have corrupted the original Torah and henceforth it became necessary to kill them for changing the verses of Allah, Al-Kimni page 389. As such, the Jewish tribes of the Banu Kanaka, Banu Koreza, and Banu Nader were systematically persecuted and dealt with immediately and swiftly. Banu Kanaka and Banu Nader were falsely accused of trivial crimes and exiled out of Medina after confiscating their properties and homes. A Muslim woman came with her husband to a Jewish market of Banu Nader tribe and a couple of Jewish boys teased her by exposing her privates. In those days, Arabs had not yet used underwear. They came to know about the use of the underwear when they invaded the civilized Coptic Christians of Egypt. The woman's husband killed one of those boys and he got killed by some Jewish boys. This problem was used by Muhammad as an excuse to punish the entire tribe. After that, he claimed that the angel Gabriel told him that the Jews of Banu Kanaka were planning to throw a huge rock on your head and kill you while you were sitting under the wall of one of their houses. Hence, based on the so-called revelation of Allah the second Jewish tribe of Banu Kanaka were collectively punished and kicked out of Medina after their houses and properties were seized by Muslims. Those two expelled Jewish tribes were forced by Muhammad to leave their homes, cattle, and other properties and marched on foot until Palestine, Israel. So, the Prophet Muhammad proved himself to be the Pharaoh of old who persecuted the children of Israel and tried to annihilate them or not different from one of the most evil tyrants in human history, Adolf Hitler, who attempted to exterminate the entire Jewish race. However, in his evilness, brutality, destructions, rapes, enslavement, and the numbers of human causalities his religion caused, Prophet Muhammad surpassed all the combined tyrants and dictators of human history, King Nimrod, King Pharaoh, King Herod, Emperor Nero, Emperor Caligula, Emperor Diocletian, Adela the Hun, Caliph Hakim by Amrolat, Mary Tudor, Bloody Mary, Maximilian Robespierre, Napoleon Bonaparte, Genghis Khan, Tamerlane, Talat Pasha, Adolf Hitler, Benito Mussolini, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, Saddam Hussein, Edi Amin Dada, and Fidel Castro. No wonder, in one of his authentic hadiths, Prophet Muhammad described himself as Anna al Dahak al Qadil, which means I am the laughing killer. The third Jewish tribe of Banu Khoreza was falsely accused by Prophet Muhammad of treason and therefore 900 of its men were beheaded in cold blood in front of Muhammad as he sat observing the entire massacre. Then, all their women, children, properties, and houses were distributed among the Muslim Mujahideen. In short period, not a single Jew was left in the Medina, the new capital of the emerging Islamic State. Before Muhammad's arrival, Medina was considered to be a Jewish city because two-thirds of its inhabitants were Jews. According to Al-Kimni, the Prophet knew for sure that the existence of Jews with a heavenly book, a historical heritage, and a series of prophecies that followed one after the other, means the existence of continuous denial of his prophethood, and inside his city and in the midst of his small state. Wherefore, followed those quick steps of cleaning Yathrib, Medina from the Jews, Hurab Dalt al-Rasul, Sayyid al-Kimni, 2001, page 367. The city of the Jews, Yathrib, after the death of Muhammad was renamed Madinat al-Rasul, which means the city of the Messenger of Allah. Before, Muhammad fled from Mecca to Yathrib, 
the Jews were the majority in Yathrib and controlled all factories of trade and weaponry. After destroying the last Jewish tribe, Muhammad led his Mujahideen to raid and sack the second Jewish city of Kabar. The only reason assigned to this overt hostility was the claim that Allah had given the Jewish city to the Muslims. Kabar was the third city in size after Mecca and Medina and was exclusively Jewish. According to Al-Kimni, at Kabar, Muslim Mujahideen raped the Jewish women openly and shared them in orgies to the point where the Prophet forbade the rape of the pregnant Jewish women. Muslims all over the Middle East take extreme pride in the slaughter and rape of the Jews of Kabar and continue to shout and chant, Kabar, Kabar O Jews, the army of Muhammad will return soon, to this very day. It was at Kabar that Muhammad raped the Jewish girl, Safiya bint Huayi after killing her father, husband, brother, and all her relatives. He raped her while she was mourning her loss of family, all killed before her eyes. While this ruthless man was raping his victim, his bodyguard Abu Ayyub al-Ansari was guarding his tent with a sword in his hand. Later on, Abu Ayyub confessed to his prophet, I scared that she might kill you because she is still Kafara, infidel woman, and you have just killed her relatives. Al-Kimni noted the same behavior of the Quran toward the Christians, after the need for Abyssinia, today Ethiopia, and its Najashi king of Abyssinia was over, the revelation must say its word toward the Christian dogmas and hence the Quran declared the Christians as infidels because they considered Jesus to be divine and equated him with God, Hurab Dalt al-Rasul, Sayyid al-Kimni, 2001, page 367. When Muslims were few in number and began to be persecuted and killed by the Meccans, they fled to Abyssinia and there they were welcomed and protected by the Christian king Najashi. According to many reliable Islamic sources, those Muslims who fled to Abyssinia had practiced takdiyah, lawful deception, before the Christian king Najashi. They purposely hid the fact that their new religion denied the incarnation, crucifixion, death and resurrection of Christ and rejected and abhorred the Holy Trinity and the divinity of Jesus. After accusing the Jews of corrupting their holy scriptures and getting rid of them, Muhammad turned to Christianity and spewed his venom and hatred on his new target. There were hardly any Christians in his new state to be accused and killed. Nevertheless, Muhammad did more damage to Christianity than he did to Judaism. Damage in the Minds of Muslims the creation of cruel hatred for Christians and their holy scriptures. He just accused the Jews of corrupting their holy scriptures without specifying where and when this corruption happened. But, for Christianity, he purposely attacked the main foundation or fundamentals of the Christian faith. He aimed his attacks at the main pillars on which the main Christian doctrines are built. He did not only attack them but he created retard generations of followers who continuously ridiculed and made fun of Christian doctrines. It has been said that, Christianity stands or falls with the divinity, crucifixion, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Muhammad spewed his venom on those essential Christian doctrines. He even claimed that God will curse everyone believes in them. He also attacked the Holy Trinity. Then. He vehemently rejected and attacked the divinity, sonship, incarnation, crucifixion, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, see Surah 4, 171, Surah 5, 17. Furthermore, he claimed that his Allah condemns Christians as infidels who deserve hellfire because they believe in these doctrines, see Surah 5, 70-75, Surah 5, 116-117. While he was in Mecca, his Quran praised the Christian's gospel and considered the Christians as people of the book, those who own a heavenly scripture, revealed by God. At this time, the Quran asserted that there is light and guidance in the Torah of Moses and the Gospel of Jesus, Surah Al-Maida 5, 43-49. At the point when Muhammad fled to Medina, he altered his attitudes, and began to accuse them of corrupting the Gospel of Jesus. Like the Jews, the Christians had suddenly corrupted and changed their gospel. Accordingly, his Quran now included damning verses, abrogating its former assertions, Surah 5, 70-75, Surah 5, 116-117.
The people of the book, the Christians, had now become kofar, infidels, and virtue of it, deserving to be killed by Muslims because they believe that Jesus is the Son of God and God came in the flesh, God is the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Mother, Mary, Surah 4, 171, Surah 5, 17. Muhammad had no correct knowledge of the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit till his death. His knowledge came from an Arab Christian cult which revered Mary. The Quran does not only reject and condemn the divinity of Jesus, but also flatly denies the eternal existence of the Holy Spirit as God. He equates the Holy Spirit with the angel Gabriel, see Surah 19, 17, Surah 21, 91, Surah 66, 12, Surah 2, 87, Surah 2, 253, Surah 4, 171, and Surah 5, 110. It follows then, that the Quran also denies the divinity of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in the Quran is a mere created angel called Gabriel. Moreover, Islam rejects the fatherhood of God. Allah is the master to whom all human beings are slaves. No Muslim is allowed to address God as his heavenly father. The problem is not only the rejection and condemnation of the main Christian doctrines, but the serious accusation he directed against the Christians. He falsely claimed that the followers of Jesus Christ have corrupted and changed his pure and true gospel, creating false doctrines of the Trinity, Divinity, Incarnation, Crucifixion, Death and Resurrection of Christ. The Quran testifies Jesus as saying that he has not taught his followers these doctrines, but that his followers had created them after he ascended to heaven, Surah al maida 5, 116-117. This false accusation if not read carefully might sound just like a matter of difference between Muslims and Christians. History proved and continues to prove that this evil accusation has far-reaching fatal consequences for the followers of Jesus Christ. Christians are made the scapegoat for the so-called corruption of the true Christianity and the assumed disappearance of the true divinely revealed Injil, the Gospel of Jesus. We know that, Jesus Christ, himself did not write any Gospel, but the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were written by his disciples after his ascension to heaven. Nevertheless, Islam teaches that God has revealed a single Gospel to Jesus, the same way he revealed one single Torah to Moses, one single Zabur, Psalms, to David, and one single Quran to Muhammad. Then, it condemns and holds Christians guilty for causing that one single Gospel to disappear and coming up with many different Gospels and writings. 27 books of the New Testament, and falsely attributing them to Jesus Christ. This false accusation creates animosity and hatred in the hearts of Muslims toward the Christians and toward their New Testament. Today, in many Middle East Muslim countries conversion to Christianity is a capital crime punishable by death. The malicious accusation also makes Muslims to view Christians as condemned infidels, who are following forged, changed and corrupted books attributed to God. It is hardly surprising that they are called brothers of apes and pigs, who are deserving to be killed, their women, children, and properties the rightful possession granted by Allah to Muslims, especially since they are on their way to hellfire. Without a single exception, Muslims all over the world believe that Christians have corrupted their Bible and continue to corrupt it every day. Muslims Imams implore in mosques, schools, colleges, and via radios and TVs, may Allah destroy the Jews and Christians, turn their wives into widows, cause their children to be orphans, and make their women, children, and properties booties to Muslims. Those hate preachers face no deterrent nor fear criminalization for openly cursing the Jews and Christians and calling them brothers of apes and pigs. Their history books proudly record the global instances of Muslim Mujahideen destroying and demolishing Christian churches, converting many of them into mosques. One outstanding example is the monumental church of Hagia Sophia, 537-1453 AD, in Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, today Istanbul, Turkey.
It was constructed as a church at the orders of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian I. Since May 29, 1453 AD, it has been a mosque. Islamic literature is full of assertions such as Muslim Mujahideen warriors proudly saying, we climb over the women of the enemy, that means they were proud of raping the women of their enemy. The fourth rightly guided caliph, Ali ibn Abi Talib proudly said, we drink water through the skulls of our enemies. Muslim invaders do not hesitate to slaughter Christian priests inside their churches. The Arab Orthodox Patriarch Sophronius of Jerusalem, 634-638 AD, who witnessed the rapid spread of Islam in Arabian Peninsula, Levant and the fall of Jerusalem, described Muslim invaders as godless barbarians who burned churches, destroyed monasteries, profaned the crosses, and blasphemed against Christ and the Church. Christians everywhere must take the Quran to a court of law and accuse it of inciting hatred against them and defaming them. They should charge it as a hate book which instigates Muslims to hate and kill them. That hate book inspired Muslim Mujahideen to invade Christian lands and massacre 60 million Christians after their women, children, houses and properties were seized by Muslims. Many of the Middle East and North Africa countries such as Syria, Palestine, Jordan, Turkey, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, Yemen, and Sudan were Christian countries before Muslims invaded and conquered them by the sword and forcibly converted their inhabitants to Islam. Even the Persian Empire, today Iran and Iraq, were once Zoroastrian Count Reese until Muslims invaded them and forced their inhabitants to accept Islam at the pain of death. Half of the inhabitants of Afghanistan were Christians and the other half was a mixture of Zoroastrians, Buddhists and Hindus before Muslims invaded and forcibly converted them all to Islam. The peoples of India, Pakistan and Bangladesh were pure Hindus before the Islamic conquests of the Indian subcontinent. The estimated human causalities of those bloody Islamic conquests were the deaths of 80 million Hindus. Today. There are 180 million Muslims in India while Pakistan, 200 million Muslims, and Bangladesh, 170 million Muslims, became completely Muslim lands. Indonesia was a Buddhist country before Islam came to it, but today there are 204,847,000 Muslims in that once upon a time Buddhist islands. Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country in the world. Based on the false accusation of Prophet Muhammad that the Jews and Christians are descendants of apes and pigs, Muslims believe that some of the monkeys and pigs today are direct descendants of Jews and Christians. There is an authentic hadith mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari which said that monkeys can commit adultery and get stoned because they are Jews and Christians. Amr bin Ma'iman said, During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance I saw a she-monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stoning it, because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse. I too, stoned it along with them, Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith No. 3849. Al-Hafid ibn Hajar said in his commentary on Sahih al-Bukhari, Al-Isma Ali narrated a longer version of this story with another chain of narrators in which, Isa bin Hatton narrated from Amr bin Ma'iman that he said, I was in Yemen tending the sheep of my people up upon an elevation. A male monkey came with a female and laid his head on her hand. Then a smaller monkey came and beckoned towards her, so she gently slipped her hand out from under the cheek of the first monkey and followed him. He mated with her while I looked on. Then she returned and gently tried to slip her hand back under the cheek of the first monkey, but he woke up suddenly, smelled her, and cried out. Then the monkeys gathered round and he began screaming while pointing towards her with his hand. The monkeys went all about and came back with that monkey that I recognized. They dug a pit for the two of them and stoned them both. So I had witnessed stoning being carried out by other than Adam's descendants, Fath al-Bari volume 7, page number 160. The Quran is the only religious book that attacks the religions of others and calls for their destruction. Muslims take great pride in destroying the places of worship of other religions or converting them into mosques, slaughtering the men, raping their women, enslaving their children, and possessing their properties and lands. 
Muslims strongly believe that their religion requires them to dispossess the infidels of their lands and occupy their countries. Islam teaches that every land that Muslim Mujahideen invaded and occupied, it became a Muslim country forever. Based on this teaching, the so-called Palestinians, the descendants of Arab Muslim invaders, claim that Israel is their Muslim land forever and the Jews have no right over it. Islam is the only religion that draws its legitimacy by condemning other religious books and their adherents. For Islam to be a true religion, Jews and Christians have to be liars and followers of corrupted religious books and untrue religions. For Muhammad to be the messenger of God, Jesus Christ has to cease be divine and son of God. For Muhammad to be the final prophet of God to mankind, Jesus' crucifixion, death and resurrection have to be null and consider the biggest lies in the history of mankind. For the Quran to be the word of God, the Bible has to be a corrupted word of God. In short, for Islam to be a true religion, Judaism and Christianity have to be false religions and their followers are infidels who are not worthy to live. Their places of worship are either to be burned and destroyed or converted into mosques for Muslims. Their women have to be female slaves and raped by Muslim men without marrying them and their children to be sold in the slaves' markets. ISIS is doing exactly what they have been instructed to do, true to the letter to their religious texts. As we shall see in later chapters, Muslims destroyed thousands upon thousands of Christian churches and monasteries. and desecrated grave sites of Christian saints. Muslim terrorists today follow the example of the early Islamic Mujahideen who destroyed places of worship and holy shrines of the followers of other religions such as Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, etc. ISIS, the newly founded Islamic Caliphate, had destroyed the tomb of the Old Testament prophet Jonah in the city of Mosul a biblical site holy to Christians and Jews. The Taliban in Afghanistan set the example when they destroyed the ancient statues of the Buddha in Bamiyan in 2001. Muslims should be proud of smashing idols, the Taliban leader, the Mullah Muhammad Omar, said at the time. It has given praise to God that we have destroyed them. Likewise, in the past as well as in recent years, Muslims have attacked religious places of worship, tombs, and defiled shrines in Asia, Africa, and Europe. History reveals that Islam considers Christianity its arch-enemy. If a Muslim becomes an atheist, secularist, communist, Satanist or even if he stops believing in the Quran as the word of Allah still he can live freely in a Muslim country and among Muslims and no one will touch him or accuse him of apostasy. But. The day the Muslim embraces Christianity he can consider himself persona non grata. Everyone will consider him an enemy, traitor, an apostate. If he is lucky he might be given three days to recant his apostasy, repent and reconvert to Islam by uttering the two Shi'ata. After his repentance and public confession of the Islamic creed, he would be confined in one place and his movements and behaviors would be monitored by everyone around him. He would never be allowed to travel to anywhere, especially abroad. If he agrees to recant and repent then he will be made to say in public, I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger and prophet. If he refuses to recant and repent then he will be killed and his dead body will be disposed of in inhumane ways, usually burned to ashes. Islamic Sharia teaches that an apostate's dead body should not be buried in any Muslim graveyards and that includes Christian and Jewish cemeteries too. When an apostate got killed Muslims will say, Matafaitis, which means he died as an animal and his dead body became like carcass of a dead beast. Since, the carcass of animal is to be burned so the body of a dead apostate is to be burned into ashes. So no decent burial is allowed for an apostate from Islam. The fourth rightly guided Caliph Ali ibn Abi Talib used to burn the apostates after killing them. Another Muslim apostatized and became a Christian. Ali ordered him to repent but he refused. Ali killed him and did not deliver his corpse to his family. They offered him a lot of money, to do so, but Ali refused and burned the corpse, mentioned by Ibn Hazm who referred to Sahih al-Bukhari. 
another man from the tribe of Baniachal became a Christian. They brought him to Ali chained in irons. Ali talked to him for a long time. The man said to him, I know that Jesus is the Son of God. Ali stood up and stepped on him. When the people saw that, they too stood up and stepped on him. Then Ali told them, Kill him. They killed him. Then Ali ordered them to burn him, mentioned by Ibn Hazm who referred to Sahih al-Bukhari. The first rightly guided Caliph Abu Bakr al-Siddiq used to tell those whom he sent to fight the apostatized tribes, call them to re-embrace Islam, if they refuse, do not spare any one of them. Burn them with fire and kill them with force and take the women and children as prisoners of war, Al-Tabari Part 2, Pages 258-272 While the commander of the Muslim army, Osama bin Zayd preparing his troops to invade the Byzantine Christian lands, the Prophet Muhammad commanded him saying, Attack them in the darkness of the dawn and fall on them killing and burn them with fire and invade them and return with the booties, Ibn Kathir, al Badaya and al Nuhaya, pages 139, 143, and Al-Tabari, Tariq al-Rusul and al-Miluk, page 156. Muhammad and his followers did and continue to do every imaginable evil in order to destroy Christianity, Christians and the Church of Jesus Christ. Nonetheless, Christianity continued and it will continue forever to be the leading religion in the world. Islam was the fastest growing religion in the world, slowed down after the terrorist cowardly attacks in September 11, 2001, and halted after the establishment of the Islamic Caliphate, which is known as ISIS. The Gospel of Jesus will continue to be preached all over the world. The Holy Bible will continue to be produced in millions and in all languages and distributed everywhere. A leading Catholic theologian, Hans Kohn wanted the Vatican to accept Muhammad as a true prophet of God? Thank God, the Roman Catholic Church rejected his demand. How can the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and the Son of the Devil, the lying Jinni have anything in common? If Satan can incarnate as a human being, or if he can have a son, I believe that had already taken place in the desert of Arabia in 570 AD. Sayyid al-Kimni also noted that, when the Muslims were small in number and in a state of weakness in Mecca, the wise verses of the Quran suited their weakness among the hostile majority, and therefore the verses granted freedom of faith and that there is no compulsion in religion and that the judgment should be left to Allah on the day of resurrection. Al-Kimni's observations noted that after that immigration from Mecca to Medina, and after the battle of the Great Badr and the changing from the state of weakness to the state of power, came the abrogating verses to abrogate the freedom of faith and command Muslims to fight and kill non-Muslims. With this truthful statement in mind, let us consider next the doctrine of abrogation in the Quran.